Greetings and salutations folks and welcome once again as always to another helping of Mr H's Hot Pot. You join me today on a Saturday early morning bimble and I've come today to Ashton in Makerfield which is not too far away from my own town of Wigan. And Ashton in Makerfield traditionally used to be in Lancashire, it is now unfortunately just like Wigan in Greater Manchester for better or worse. Now I've come today for a bimble, number one to stretch the old legs, get a bit of fresh air in the lungs because I am recovering from that uh, bit of a cold that's been doing the rounds and I've come here as it ties in nicely with today's little video as I've come to have a look at an old smallpox hospital site that uh, is hidden in these fields somewhere. Now I'm currently on the public footpath but in a moment I'm going to have to veer off and go on to private land to make my way over to where this old hospital used to be located. Now it was located here in 1893 i've no idea when it closed down because it was what was known as an isolation hospital and isolation hospitals or sanatoriums they used to be very popular in the victorian era because it was the days before antibiotics and things like that so they would make these facilities in out of the way places take infected people to them and hopefully protect the rest of the population from disease whilst waiting for the immune system of the patient to kick in. Sadly, that didn't work for many people and many people perished in these sanatoriums as conditions were very poor. Now this particular facility only had eight beds. It was very small and it was funded by the then Ashton Urban District and they funded the hospital and the running of it because there was no NHS back in them days. Anyway, I'm slowly making my way now to the point where I'm going to have to leave the public footpath and venture onto private land and slowly make my way over to the spot where this hospital used to be hidden. So join me in a moment when I get onto the private land and we make our way over to where this smallpox hospital used to be located. Okay folks, welcome back. As you can see, I'm now making my way across an open field. I'm trying to stick to the edge of this field because it is private land and I don't want to damage anything but uh, I shouldn't really be here by right so if I do get challenged then I'll just simply act numb as my mother used to say and uh, state that I've veered off the public footpath and can they direct me back to it but I'm making my way towards a clump of trees which is where this former hospital used to be located I'll just whip the camera around now and hopefully you'll be able to see it in the distance and that's where we're going to be making our way to now these isolation hospitals used to be funded by government grants back in the Victorian era and they would give a grant to the local authority to buy a prefabricated building. There was a number of these companies that sprang up just like the air raid shelters sprang up during the Second World War and companies made them. They used to do the same with the isolation hospitals. So because it was a fabricated building I'm not expecting to find any building standing as such but we should be able to find a few remains because it's very difficult once man has been to a particular spot to remove all traces and evidence of them being there so I'm banking on a bit of laziness from the farmer who owns this particular land because they haven't redeveloped it judging from Google Earth which I'll be using a lot of throughout this video along with the ordnance survey maps to give you an idea of what this facility used to look like now it was only eight beds, it wasn't a big facility, but it was just enough to try and help alleviate the smallpox problem that was uh, running through the country at the time. It's only 1980 that they got rid of smallpox, which is in my lifetime, so it just shows you it had been around for quite a while. Now the idea of uh, having it out here was also to keep it away from public gaze. Because although the Victorians celebrated death where we don't know, they was also terrified of disease. And that's why they used to hide it in places like this. Now I'll give you a quick overview of what this site used to look like back in 1914 when the Ordnance Survey map was taken. And you'll be able to see just how small this facility actually was. Now as you can see from this overview, it wasn't really very big. Looking at it, I should imagine there was two wards either side, whether or not they were split because of the sexes, male and female, I should imagine that they did that. But um, there would have been two wards, there would have been an observation ward in the middle, 
probably an administration block. There would have been water closets or ablution blocks either end of the ward. And then that little building there, that little square, just off from the main building, that would have been a mortuary because unfortunately these people wouldn't have survived. It was very difficult back in them days. And I should imagine very few people actually walked out of this facility. Anyway, I'll get back on camera now as we're now approaching where this hospital used to stand. And here we are, we're now making our way towards it. Very quiet this morning. There's no one around us yet. But uh, hopefully I won't be challenged. Now once I get in these trees, I should be hidden from view. And this really was an isolated spot. You can see why they chose it. Those houses that you can just see in the distance though, those wouldn't have been there back in the 1800s. And it was at the end of a very long drive and there was a dog leg in the drive so that it would be hidden from the main road. Now, the reason I know that there was eight beds in this facility that we're going to be taking a look at was simply somebody came and inspected it in 1893 and it was inspected by a government approved doctor and there was rather scathing on the findings of this hospital as they found there was no ambulance here to ferry patients about there was no equipment for sterilising anything or disinfecting anything and basically conditions were very poor but we'll now get into the trees and uh, we'll see just what remains from this old facility if anything and here we are folks we're now inside this little clump of trees I've just negotiated those brambles though and this, just beyond this barbed wire fence, is the site of the old smallpox hospital here in Ashton in Makerfield. And I can see a few remains there, there's a few bricks. Looks like a bit of slate there in the distance. And there's a bit of a, an open pit here which I'm going to make my way towards. I'm now roughly at the back of the building that I would suspect was a mortuary or a morgue back when this facility used to stand and as you can see that's a very deep pit it's a brick chamber it's brick land and you can see the hole there in that stonework that's actually been chiseled in now whether or not this was like a midden or something like that who knows unfortunately there's very few records stand the uh, work of the sanatorium or the isolation hospital was shrouded in misery because as I say the Victorians they feared disease so not a lot was really known about it but that is a very deep pit please leave your comments below if you have some idea of what this may have been but I'm going to try and negotiate I'm going to be really naughty and negotiate that barbed wire fence and I'm going to take a bit of a walk around this site and just see if there's anything remains on the surface so I'm going to make my way back over there now and hopefully I can duck under that barbed wire so what Potters I've managed to get past that barbed wire and I'm now in the area where this facility used to stand and it's amazing to think that I'm probably the first person in 100 years to come to this knowing what used to be here. And there's lots of bricks on the surface here that give the game away that something used to stand here. Now what used to happen was they would be brought in via the main road which is way over there. And then they would be brought down a path which is just through these trees here. I'll whip the camera around in a moment. And brought to the hospital which used to stand where I'm now stood and there was a bit of a dog leg in the path which I'll show you an overhead view in a moment and as you can see from that overhead Google map you can see the dog leg there in what used to be the path into this facility and the reason for that was so the public couldn't see the facility from the main road and this is where the entrance where would have been into this facility from Goldburn Road just to the left of that brick wall though which wouldn't have been there in 1893 and it would have followed 
the tree line all the way around to that dog leg and then over and as you can see there's no way the facility could be seen from this point. Now as I said there's lots of remains on the surface. I would love to get in here with a bit of a metal detector and uh, give this a good going over but as you sort of in the middle of private land that's not going to happen unless of course you can get permission off the farmer to come here and uh, do a bit of digging about but it's very rare that they allow you to do that but just imagine what treasures lay beneath my feet right now anyway I'll whip the camera around and we'll take a look at some of the bricks and remains and another look at that pit from this handle and uh, I'll just take a look at what's still here and there we have a little bit of metal of some description on the surface no idea what that would have been whether it was part of the building or it was part of some equipment at one time or another who knows and it's back there through there where the path used to be I'm not going to go much further because there is an house in that clump of trees that you can just see right at the far side of the screen there I can just see the chimneys and the roof line of it so I'm not going to venture too far over there again I didn't realise that this facility used to be in a dip again that would have kept it hidden from the main road but yeah sad to think that quite a few of poor souls would have ended the days in this little spot as picturesque as it probably was back in the day I mean this is really lost history because we don't know much about the isolation hospitals because as I say the Victorians and that didn't really record what went on in them and it's amazing just how nature takes areas back a few bricks there on the surface and these pop up little hospitals that they made. Florence Nightingale actually had her hand in the design of them. A little bit of glass there, probably from one of the windows. There's a little bit of corrugated tin there, just lying abandoned. Now whether or not that's Victorian or, or not, who knows. I should imagine it was probably from this facility. As this larger piece over here was probably from it as well whether or not they formed part of the roof or the walls who knows but as I say I would love to come in here with a metal detector and just go over it and spend a couple of days just doing a thorough search because I'm right where this facility would have stood as I say, I think there would have been a building over there that would have served as the mortuary. And I should imagine, that back in the day, it was well used. Bit of earthenware pipe there. Lots of bricks, whether or not somebody has been camping in here or at some point, who knows. They probably wouldn't have done if they know what used to stand here. Unfortunately, although there's a letter on that half ice brick though, there's no names on any of these bricks. But they're certainly the old imperial style of bricks. You know, they'll measure 75 millimetres them. Well, today's bricks measure 65. A little bit of uh, brickwork knowledge, though, that I always like to put in. And this is the pit that I was taking a look at earlier. This is from this side of the fence. You can see it's really deep, that. And that's probably the best re remnant of this old hospital. There's a slate, though, so that would have had a slated roof at some point. yeah amazing right then I'm going to whip the camera around and I think I'll wrap this one up because sadly without the aid of a metal detector there's not really a lot on the surface because it's autumn and there's the fall of the leaves there 
you can't really see anything and I don't want to be scratching about in here and uh, disturbing anything. Okay folks, well that'll just about do it for today. I'm going to shortly wrap this video up and head off back to the old jalopy to edit up this video ready for your edification back home. But before I go, I've managed to find on the old interweb a picture of what one of these isolation hospitals used to look like. It's not this particular one that stood here, but it is one from that era. So I'll stick that in for you now and you'll be able to see what this one would have probably looked like back in the day. And as you can see, they were very simple in design and probably very easily thrown together. But that's what one of these hospitals would have looked like back in the day. Anyway, I'm going to get back to the camera now and wrap this video up. And that will do it for today, folks. I'm going to get off now. Uh, there's a little bit of oldie town music playing in the background, though. It's being carried over from those houses in the background. They've got it on rather loud for a Saturday. And uh, it's a little bit eerie listening to old town music and being stood in an area that you know plenty of people probably perished from smallpox in. And uh, it does give me the chills, I must admit, as the wind's slowly blowing through the trees. Anyway, I'm going to go and renegotiate that barbed wire fence behind me and slowly make my way back to the public footpath and uh, get back to the old jalopy. So, from myself, Mr H, here on the site of the former smallpox hospital here in Ashton in Makerfield, it is bye-bye for now.